Good morning. Uh, we're Larry and Jill Gunstream. Uh, whoever did the slide, thank you for spelling my name right. <laughs> um, Psalm 9, 1 and 2 says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I want to give thanks to the Lord for his wonderful deeds during a very difficult period for our family. In July 2019, my almost 97-year-old father was on his way to work. Yes, you heard me right. He had worked since retirement answering the phone and keeping the books at an exotic car repair shop owned by an old friend of ours. He stopped to get gas when he got dizzy and fell, breaking his hip. Amazingly, he pulled himself back into the car and drove to work, which wasn't far away. His boss drove him to St. Bernardine's ER. After x-rays confirming the broken hip, his surgeons gave my dad two choices. He could either opt to not fix the hip and let nature take its course, which uh, the doctor said he had done with his own mother, or he could get the hip replaced. God was good to us in that he gave my dad the last bit of coherence that he would have, and he made his own decision to have the hip replaced, which occurred on his 97th birthday. Unfortunately, he did not respond to physical therapy post-op, and after almost two weeks, he was discharged to a skilled nursing facility. We live in Glendora, and the options that were given us were for Orange County or South Pasadena. That was unacceptable. So we prayed that the Lord would open up something closer to home. Then we got the call that something had opened up literally five minutes from our house. After two weeks there, with my dad again not responding to physical therapy and descending deeper into dementia, the skilled nursing facility gave us a deadline to move him to hospice care. Since we'd never done anything like this, we had no idea where we could take him. I happened to call a friend of mine on another matter, and she asked me about my dad. After telling her we were on a deadline to find him some hospice care, she gave me a number for a hospice facility where her mother-in-law had been. I called it right away, and they said they had just had a room open up. We went to visit it and loved it. It was a private home just blocks from our house, and my dad would have a private room. I went back to the skilled nursing facility to tell them we'd found a place for my dad, and as I entered the building, the administrator was heading towards me to tell me that they had to discharge my dad the next day. God provided for my father just in time. The administrator of the hospice home also helped me apply for a VA benefit that I didn't know about that paid for a majority of my dad's care. We moved him in in August, and he spent the next five months there. Since it was close, I was able to visit him every day, keep an eye on his care, and just sit with him and hold his hand. And since God was gracious to have him pass in January, before the COVID hit, I was with him when he passed and was able to do a funeral for him with close friends and family at Riverside National Cemetery since he was a World War II and a Korea vet. I want to thank God for the grace and mercy he showed not only to my father, who I know is in heaven, but to me and my family during this very difficult time. So three weeks after Jill's dad broke his left hip, my dad got up early in the morning to adjust the thermostat, fell and broke his left hip. He had had a hospitalization for diverticulitis, and that coupled with his Parkinson's disease had left him unsteady on his feet. He had a hip replacement at 92 and responded well to physical therapy, but his body could only take so much. As he began to decline, I often grieved over him as I watched him fall apart piece by piece. He still had his wits about him and was well aware of his body not working as it had. It was hard to watch. He and I used to have breakfast together every Saturday morning at Fla Flappy Jack's in Glendora, usually followed by coffee at his dining room table. It was the highlight of the week for both of us. We would talk about family, concerns about my mother, who was then in assisted living, and the problems of the world. <laughs> we spoke about current events and his life growing up. 
we always had something to laugh about. These times were clearly a gift from God to me as I spent time with him during his last days. Sunday mornings, I would email him some of the songs we would be singing in church. He looked forward to reading the lyrics. He couldn't hear well, but these were hymns from his Nazarene childhood, and the music would play in his head. He clearly liked, he, he particularly liked Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. He said it brought tears to his eyes. God's grace was manifested not only in these moments, but so many more. We live only 10 minutes from his house, so I was able to be there at a moment's notice. God knew we would need to live in Glendora when we decided to move from San Gabriel in 1989. My dad was able to have 24-7 care at home, and because I was self-employed, I could be there whenever I needed to see him without the COVID constraints, which was an amazing blessing all by itself. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. During his last few weeks, each of my siblings who live out of state and their children were able to FaceTime with dad. They all exchanged I love you's and watched as he gave them, and I watched as he gave them parting advice. The Lord's grace was abundant to all. My father, my father and my best friend, finally passed into the Lord's presence. June 17, he was surrounded by four of his caregivers who had come back on their own time to be with him and my wife, Jill. Ironically, I had left, left to go home to change clothes just moments before. James tells us, what is your life? For you are missed that appears for a little time and then vanishes. What we experienced first with Jill's dad and then my own has definitely brought home the reality of this scripture. In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. We are here for his purposes to bring him glory. Every day is a gift. I told him a few days before he passed, I will see you again, Dad at heaven's gates, and we'll enjoy breakfast together. I am comforted every day by this hope. Thank you.